In this video, I will demonstrate how to create a silk gazar material from a photograph with Substance Designer. Substance Designer can capture fabrics in very detailed ways. As a node-based environment, it is perhaps not as easy to operate as Substance Sampler, but it offers an incredible amount of control and flexibility, making it the preferred choice in many cases. Similarly to Sampler, Fabric capture is preferable when working with existing physical fabrics, while procedural or parametric techniques are better for making several variations or iterations and for recreating fabrics on a structural yarn level from the ground up. So let's get started. I start by creating an Adobe standard material graph as it already contains all of the channel outputs I wish to use for my material. I like to work at 4K as I work a lot with large areas of fabrics. Setting the output format to relative to parent allows nodes to be driven by either 8-bit or 16-bit inputs, which can be useful. 16-bit maps are usually preferable as they offer many more steps between color values, which can especially make a difference with normal and height maps. The Adobe Standard Material preset includes many outputs that I need, as well as a few that I don't, so I will delete these. Subsurface scattering, coat and sheen outputs are not needed in this example. It's time to bring in my fabric photo. I right-click on the package and from the pop-up menu I select Link Bitmap. I load the photo I want to use and drag and drop it into my graph. It is important to note here that the original ratio of the photograph is not square, as is the photograph node when I use it in the graph. This can either be addressed by setting the physical size of the graph, or by recreating the ratio when tiling the photo inside the graph. In general, square ratios are easier to handle, but I am using a random ratio here to demonstrate that this works too. Clicking on the nodes output and dragging outwards will invoke the nodes menu. I create a grayscale conversion node, which will convert the photo to grayscale, which is more appropriate for working with early nodes that will eventually break out to several channels. From this, I create a make it tile patch grayscale node. In the parameters panel, I adjust the mask warping, as well as the pattern size, width and height. These options of course depend on the photo at hand. Had I wanted to restore the initial ratio of the original photo, this would be an opportunity to do it. As the repeat is a little too perfect and unnatural, I will try to break it up by using a warp node with the tiled fabric and a directional scratches node as inputs. As I will expose the warp intensity parameter, I don't need to fine tune this now. Moving forward, I connect a gradient map to convert the grayscale fabric back to color so that I can start creating the color channel of the material. I add a color equalizer with a low radius to make the overall color of the fabric more uniform. I will need some more space before I get to my outputs, so I drag select all of my existing nodes and push them a little to the left. I use a second Make It Tile Patch node and repeat the fabric a further 200 times for width and height. This will act as my master node from which I will derive all material maps. I put this node into a blend node with its mode set to overlay and mix it with a uniform color. This will serve as my base color, so I will connect it to the base color output. I can see the change in the 3D view. To create the roughness map, I will start by inverting my master node, adding a levels node to increase its contrast, converting it to grayscale, and blending it with a uniform color 
in multiply mode. I connect this to the roughness output. Starting again from my master node, I convert it to a grayscale, add a contrast luminosity node, and connect it to my height output. This will allow me later to control in detail how deep and intense the weave appears on my model. To achieve this, I will expose the contrast parameter by clicking the little icon next to the parameter's name and selecting Expose as new graph input. In the Expose parameter dialog, I can give it a name and confirm the settings, which I leave at default. I do the same for luminosity. I connect a normal node to my grayscale master node and I connect this to my normal output. This converts the grayscale map to a normal map. I expose the normal intensity parameter so I can later control the intensity of the weave on my model. Next, I connect an ambient occlusion node to my grayscale master node and expose its height depth parameter. As there is no output node for ambient occlusion currently in my graph, I have to create a new output node. In its attributes panel, I select Ambient Occlusion from the Usage drop down menu, set the identifier to Ambient Occlusion, one word lowercase, and the label to Ambient Occlusion. The identifier relies on preset keywords, whereas the label can be anything. I then connect the Ambient Occlusion node to the Ambient Occlusion output. My fabric is starting to shape up. I can now adjust roughness and metallic a little, and I can also delete the outputs I do not need. I will also need anisotropy for this fabric, so I will set the anisotropy level to 1 and the anisotropy angle to 0 0.35, as I have found this kind of fabric to work best with these settings. Anisotropy varies the way light reflects off of a surface depending on the direction of the light. My material is now ready, and to export it, I only have to select the package and from the Publish menu, select Publish SPSAR file. I could have also sent it directly to other Substance apps. To recap the creation of my master node, I start with the bitmap and process it through a grayscale conversion, a make it tile patch, a directional warp with a noise input, a gradient map, a color equalizer, and a second make it tile patch. I blend it with a color to create the color map. I invert it, adjust levels, and blend it with a grayscale shade to create the roughness map. I convert it to grayscale and connect it to a normal node to create the normal map. I pass the same grayscale conversion node to a contrast luminosity node to create the height map. I set the metallic to a uniform mid gray. Finally, I use an ambient occlusion node after the grayscale master node to get the ambient occlusion map. Here is the final result in the designer's 3D view. This concludes fabric capture from a photo with Substance Designer. In the next video, I will cover parametric fabric authoring with Designer.